Good afternoon and welcome everyone to Lau Avenue in the city of Middletown to a site that has been vacant for many, many years. It's been an eyesore and uh, symbolic of the decay of the city back going into the 70s and also a key part of our revitalization of our center city and our community as a whole. I'm here today with Senator Scoopis to my left, who's been a big part of this restoration of this project, and with Charlie Quinn from Recap, and we're here to make a couple of announcements. Uh, but before we do so, before I have the Senator come up and, and Charlie to address what's gonna be going on here, I wanna give you a little re uh, recap on, no pun on words here, but, uh, <laughs> on what we've been doing for the past 20 plus years with this property. And that, 20 plus years is probably yet underestimating the timeline. Um, this building was a viable building in the city for many, many years. It was the old OW station as a train station, and then was an active uh, catering hall, nightclub, and housed many, many businesses throughout it, and fell into disarray probably well over 20, 25 years ago. We decided at that time, I was a member of, I think, even of the Common Council, that we were exploring different opportunities for redeveloping the property. And we went through many opportunities and all of them failed. Uh, the last was in the, uh, around 2008, 2007, when the property was sold to a couple of developers. Um, I was not in office at the time, but the property was sold with development conditions and those conditions were not being met. We then, um, when I came back into office in 2010, uh, we had a meeting with the, with the developer and he admitted that he was unable to make the project work. The city then took the property back. Uh, we then, have, for a brief run, we had a, an agreement with the Middletown Community Health Center. Uh, Senator Schumer did a press conference right here also announcing uh, new market tax credits which were, would be a stimulus for the development of the property. Um, that project also failed. We then started focusing our directions in another way around 2020, 2021. And we began opening discussions with the ABCD program, which is also a Head Start program. Those discussions led to us looking at any way possible to develop this building for a Head Start program. The biggest problem we had was the estimates, the original estimates came in at very low numbers uh, because there was limited access to the building. We then put together a, um, started hiring contractors, or not contractors, engineers. Now Fusco is here with us today. Um, we're the local engineer on this project uh, to start putting together some more realistic numbers. And then our mission was then to start acquiring funding for the project. So it became a team effort, and the team effort includes a very important players from the state level, one being Senator Scoofus behind me, and another Aileen Gunther. Senator Scoofus just started representing Middletown um, about a year and a half ago, so, but prior to that, um, and up till today, we had Aileen Gunther as our assemblywoman. And Aileen was instrumental in providing and directing a lot of the funding into this project would move it from a wish to close to a reality. That funding includes 2,000 in capital assistance from the New York State uh, Dormitory Authority, a 5.75 million commitment from the city of Middletown using the ARPA funding through the federal government, an initial $1 million commitment from the city of Middletown a grant through the CDBG CARES Act under New York State Homes and Community Renewal of $4.1 million, a Restore New York grant of $1.8 million, and the city has also bonded an additional $6 million on this project, which brought us up to a little over $20 million in funding. The project estimates went from the low eight to tens before COVID to 24 to 28 currently, 24 to 28 million dollar project. That is primarily because of a few things. One, 
is to close the gap on funding we are seeking both New York State and federal historic tax credits for the restoration of the project. One, we would like to restore the building to what it was. We don't have any interest in changing the character of the building. Um, and, and we think it's iconic. It's an iconic structure that won't be, you don't build buildings like this anymore. So in order to do that, we have to bring in special engineering companies and consultants to reconstruct the property to what it was, or as the best we can to what it was. As you know, on the north end, we did have a fire years ago, and that fire, um, um, there was discussion on whether to tear that section of the building down. At this point, State Historic Preservation, they want that part restored, so of course that bumped the cost up on the restoration of the project. So. We're at that point now where we have a viable project and when we readjusted the timeline and this was done in conjunction with the Common Council and the engineers and primarily the local guy Al Fusco and working with Jacob Tewil, our Commissioner of Public Works, our Alderman Paul Johnson and Kevin Witt who are here today, Alderman Massey who also represents this area with <coughs> Kevin Witt and with our Economic Development Department Maria Bruni uh, the director, Caitlin, her assistant director, all of us working together to bring this project about. We also have other representatives here from the city, Rick McCormick, our city clerk, and our police chief, John Awancho. So I want to thank all the city employees involved in this from day one, some of us going back 20 years. Al was a city employee when it started, I believe, and, um, and really it took a lot of work and a lot of commitment and a lot of dedication to bring this about. So our revised timeline now is as follows. As you can see, there is work going on. It's been going on probably for a month or two, a couple months. And when this part is the initial shoring and abatement, and that will then bring us to a point, and hopefully by November, that we have the interior review by the National Park Service and SHPO, which is State Historic Preservation. They will then identify how they want the building to be historically restored on the interior. Keep in mind that we could not get into the building, um, or at least all parts of the building initially, because of the condition of the building. And after the shoring and abatement, both the state historic preservation folks and our engineers will have access to the full building. We hope to have complete drawings, construction drawings by November of 24, and the shoring and abatement complete by December of 24. The bid documents are scheduled to be completed in, uh, by the end of December. And in January, we plan on advertising the bid for the construction or the reconstruction. We hope to have the bids back. Uh, the date will be set sometime in February. Our contracts will be completed sometime in March of 25. And we hope to have a groundbreaking late March or early April of 25. The construction substantially complete date is January of 26. So it's a very aggressive schedule, as you can see, but we've been at it for quite a while, and a lot of the preliminary work has been done. I gave you the numbers, or the numbers are huge. We know that, it's not like it's a return on, um, you normally wouldn't pay that kind of money to build a 29,000 square foot building. But this building is iconic, that's why the state and federal government have created these um, tax credit structures that will inject additional money into these projects to save structures like this. So I mentioned the financing and without having a partner on the state level, you can see we would not be in this project at all. Uh, this project would have been, this building would have been demolished years ago uh, because for safety reasons, uh, all we did was fence it off because we had partners on the state level. And those partners are Aileen Gunther and Senator Scoofus. So uh, he's only represented us for a short while, but he's been able to inject and work with us on getting timelines extended by the state, getting additional funds extended into the project, and we look forward to working with him to complete the project. So without further ado, uh, Senator James Scoofus. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor, and I'm delighted to be here, delighted to see all of you. I wanna underscore a few things that were said or alluded to. And we've said this first one before many times because there is a lot of excitement happening in this city. 
I'll use a word that the mayor uses frequently. Five, six years ago, there were tumbleweeds rolling down these streets here in downtown Middletown. Empty storefronts, very little economic activity, very little construction happening or reconstruction happening. And you see, and this is, it all starts and ends with City Hall, the mayor's leadership, the city council, his team, Maria. What they have done to the downtown area over these five, six years should not be taken for granted. It's transformational. This is just the latest of the revitalization efforts that have been going on here for many years now. But this one is really important for all the reasons that the mayor had explained, but also because this is the entryway to the downtown quarter. When people come and visit or people return home to here in Middletown, many of them drive past this building every single time. And they've been driving past this building as it is seen here today for 25 plus years in the state of disrepair, the blight that it's been. So when we talk about economic development, whether it's this county or anywhere in the state, this is real economic development. This is the best kind of economic development. A lot of quote unquote economic development is you know, agencies throwing money at projects, incentives at projects that were going to happen anyway, and that money just goes in the back pocket of the developers or the owners and didn't really do anything to change the trajectory of that project, of those plans. This economic development, the money that was rattled off by the mayor, that money is not in place. This doesn't happen. Plain and simple, this project does not happen. This is the best kind of economic development. And to reinforce how wonderful this is, and Charlie will talk a lot more about this, not only are we restoring a blight at the entry of this great city that's been a blight for 25 plus years, but the tenant that's going to be in this building and the children and the families that are going to be impacted and touched, livelihoods improved, affected, there is nothing better than that. I hope every single person here who has a camera takes a photo of this building today. I, I want you to take a photo of this building and its occupants and inside when this project is done and recap is in this building and frame a before and after. It's going to be the most wonderful before and after this city I think has seen in a very, very long time. So I'm delighted. I'm sort of the caboose on, on this train here. I've only been here for a year and a half, almost two years here in this city. I'm delighted to, to be a small part of the effort on this project and, and a lot of the projects going on here over the last couple of years. But the real credit belongs to my counterpart in the assembly, Aileen Gunther. And as I said before, it starts and ends with the mayor, his team, the city council. There is nothing better than what's about to happen uh, right behind us here at this ONW station. I can't wait to see it. I know you all can't wait to see it. And lives will be touched at the end once recap is in here, Head Start is in here, affecting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of families in our area in the best possible way. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Middletown. Thank you, Senator. Thank you for your kind words also. You know, earlier, um, 2 o'clock, I was up at recap uh, reading to uh, group of the uh, students there, um, they were kind to me because I saw Paula Kay's picture yesterday, you were reading up there within the last couple of days, and you were sitting on the floor, <laughs> and, and I told Charlie, I'm not sitting on the floor, Charlie, but, so they were kind enough to provide a chair and told me that, um, no, we wouldn't have had Paula sit on the floor either, but she chose to, but uh, a little different for me. So. This is a program, as the Senator said, it's happening here now, and that's a great, great program. In the beginning, I mentioned ABCD, because that was the original recap, original Head Start program. At some point, ABCD had a change in leadership and a change in direction. And this project, as much as we all worked for the funding part of this, almost died at that point, because we no longer had the tenant that we were hoping to have. 
At that point, uh, Maria Bruni contacted Charlie Quinn. She said, I have a solution, and she did. And that solution was Charlie Quinn. So we, we contacted Charlie, we had meetings. Um, I think Heather was at the meetings. And we started talking about the project, and Charlie came up with a solution. So I'm gonna let you explain what that was and what your plans are, and wanna say thank you to the RECAP board and to RECAP for stepping in on this project. It's a significant changing event for our community, and without RECAP stepping forward with the Head Start program, it would not be happening despite all the grant money that's coming in. So, Charlie Quinn, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And on behalf of the Board of Directors and staff of Regional Economic Community Action Program, thank you everybody for coming out this afternoon. Uh, to be clear, I am not the, the solution. Um, <laughs> our agency is the solution. Um, the incredible staff that works at Head Start, um, our board of directors who decided that this is a good investment for the agency um, to, to move forward with this, the agency is the, the solution. Uh, I'm honored to be here representing RECAP. We've been active in Middletown and Orange County for 59 years. For six decades, we have worked tirelessly to support the families and individuals in this community, uh, providing essential services that promote stability, growth, opportunity, positive health outcomes, and self-sufficiency. In short, we help people and change lives. The program that's going into the O&W building is going to be our Head Start program. Right now, it is just Head Start. Um, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a program for children three and four years old whose families are income qualified. Yes, it's daycare, but it's much more than that. Our teachers, the staff, the teaching assistants, the program aides, the folks who go home to the homes of the children and visit with the families do so much more than daycare. It's an education program that gets these children ready for kindergarten. They started an eight million word deficit from their peers who were not living in poverty. Um, and they coach these kids up, they get their academic skills up, um, they make sure they're healthy, make sure they're seeing their doctors, their dentists, the teachers brush their teeth with them at the tables every single day. And they make sure that the children know that they're loved. The program produces college graduates, doctors, lawyers, policemen, teachers, um, all sorts of wonderful citizens come out of our programs. Uh, we're celebrating an exciting new chapter in RECAP's life. Uh, as we partner with Mayor DiStefano and his remarkable team, Maria, Caitlin, to realize a shared vision, restoring the o and building. And it represents more than just a preservation of history. It's a march into the future, the future of our children and our commitment to the families who depend upon quality education here in Middletown. We've been searching for a new home for Head Start for years. Uh, we've had wonderful partnerships with churches in the communities, uh, but frankly, the buildings are not big enough for our programs. We haven't been able to expand. We haven't been able to provide the perfect environment for our children. And even though our program is at its capacity, last year, 65 families remained on our waiting list, um, not being served by Head Start. This area of Middletown that we're in right now is considered a child care desert. There are just not enough slots for the children in the community. This project's going to allow us to serve 226 children in this building. It's going to allow us to expand the ages of the children who are now three, four, and five years old, all the way down to birth and even pre prenatal care with their mothers. We're going to be able to expand the length of the day for our children so that their parents can continue to work 
without worrying about where their children are. We're going to increase the families that we can serve, the eligible income. Right now we serve families who are up to 130% of the poverty guideline. Um, in Orange County, for one parent, one child, that's $9.38 an hour. That's, that's the cap. This program is going to allow us to serve families up to 300% of the poverty level. So it's a huge expansion, and it's going to create jobs. Right now, 50% of the people that work in our Head Start program are for, were or are Head Start parents. We're going to add an additional 34 positions at, in our Head Start program, and it's going to be a minimum of $21 per hour that those folks are paying. So this is economic development. We're expanding the workforce. We're allowing the workforce to work longer and make it more stable in the area. The word community is literally in our agency's name, Regional Economic Community Action Program. And our mission statement calls for us to do work by collaborating with public and private partners. We never do our work alone. We do it with our community and with partners. This project is the epitome of that partnership. We're deep, deeply grateful to Mayor DiStefano and his team for the opportunity to collaborate in this effort. Together we are not just restoring a building, we are investing in the future of Middletown's children and families, ensuring everyone has the access to opportunities that they deserve. Thank you and we look for, forward to more years of service, growth, and partnership with the City of Middletown. It is, it's not going to be other services. It's, I'm sorry. The question was, <laughs> it's going to start with Head Start programs or are we going to bring other okay. services into the building? Okay. In short, it's going to be all child care services. It's just going to be different funding sources that allows us to expand um, the children that we're able to serve. It'll include early Head Start um, and uh, vouchers from the county for families who can't afford child care. Thank you all for coming. We look forward to a successful project.